Hello trainers, it's Ellie Trainerlin. So, I was at work the other week, just doing the very best work like no one ever has, when suddenly a guy runs in from another department, he's like a hiker, and he's screaming at the top of his lungs, and we're like, hey, what's going on? And the hiker says, the building is being taken over by criminals. So we were all like, oh no, is it Team Rocket? And the hiker says, no, not them. Okay, is it Team Aqua? Team Magma? Oh, no, 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 not them either. What, Team Galactic? No, not them, not Galactic. Oh my god, just tell us who it is then. It's Team Go Rock Squad. And naturally, we're all standing there like, who the heck is this bootleg team? Never heard of them. But it turns out, they're the bad team from the first Pokemon Ranger games. Like, we're not even being invaded by a cool team. They're not even from the main series. I lost my job due to a lame spin-off team. Like, trainers, do you know who the leader of Team Go Rock Squad is? No, you don't, because nobody remembers that guy. But I'm gonna tell you, his name is Gordor. Not Gordon, but Gordor, like Mordor, with a G. So this wannabe Sauron destroys the building, so we are all jobless now. So anyway, that's why I haven't made many videos lately, because I legit did lose my job. That part is actually true. And I had my video editing program through work, so I don't know if I'll be able to keep making videos for my Pokemon channel. So that's my little Halloween scare this year. But despite the stress from this, I wanted to make something lighthearted for Halloween. So we're gonna play Ghostbusters, because I just wanted to look into the origins of one of my favorite ghost-type Pokemon, which is Duskull. So we're gonna put on our silvscope goggles to identify some ghosts. The reason I wanted to look into Duskull in particular is because my first game was Sapphire, so it's one of the first ghost-type Pokemon I ever interacted with. It's one of them that made me like ghost-type as a type. So I thought I'd honor it by looking into Duskull. Now, Duskull? It's a floating skull with a singular red light glowing inside its eye sockets. It's wearing a cute reaper cloth, which is also the name of the item needed for it to evolve into its final form, Dusk Noir. Dusk Ops is in the middle, of course, we all know this. The name Dusk Skull is uh, clearly just Dusk plus Skull, but it also incidentally sounds similar to the Swedish word Duskale. Dusk Skull. Dusk Skull. It's pretty similar, which literally means skull. Well, if you want to be even more literal, it's basically dead skull, but it means like a human skull. That's the word we use for it. I don't think that was intentional, but I don't know. For me, that made the name more interesting. So it's probably a coincidence, but it's a very fitting coincidence. A possible inspiration for that skull, other than just the Grim Reaper, which is pretty obvious, are Hitodama, which in Japanese folklore is the soul of a dead human floating around as a fireball in the night. The problem with that is that those flames tend to be described as blue, which Duskull is very much not blue. Not even the shinies blue. However, there is another yokai, which is called Kitsunebi, which is also a ghost light. However, this one looks like fire, so red or orange. And even more interestingly, this one is specifically said to be like fire from a lantern or torch, which is going to be more relevant later, just keep on listening. So in the official art and the first sprites, Duskull kept its hands on the back, Leading some people to think he didn't even have arms, which I think is kind of funny. I'm pretty curious to why they did that. But the best explanation I was able to come up with is that it's sort of just like the stereotypical old person pose to keep your hands on your back, you know? So that would just be a nod to Duskull being like a dead human soul. But that's pretty far-fetched, but still you don't really know. But then, I happened to see this other interesting tidbit about Japanese folklore. Because they believe the dead do things in reverse. It's why, for example, the dead wear a kimono right or left instead of the normal left over right. Which is something I think a lot of weebs have heard about, at least I knew about this. So they do other things backwards as well. So Duskull keeping its hand on the back may simply adhere to this reversal idea that they're doing it backwards. And curiously, Again, in Swedish folklore, if you put your clothes on backwards and inside out, that means magical beings lose their powers over you. So funnily enough, both the name and the sort of backwardsness that kind of fits into the local Scandinavian folklore. So again, that this just makes me like it even more, even though I personally, I still think it's coincidental. But you never know what inspirations they take. So shiny Duskull has a red cloth instead of a, you know, usual black or dark grey one, however you wanna define the color. I couldn't find any particular reason for Duskull being red. Maybe it just matches the red eye better. However, 
I could find something for its evolution Dusclops shiny being red. So we're gonna move over to Dusclops. And Dusclops is uh, like many Pokemon, a mix of inspirations. It's a mummy and a Cyclops, possibly an empty shell, similar to Shedinia. It's also a Hitotsume Koso, which I probably butchered that, but it's a Cyclops like Jokai from Japan. But more interestingly, it's also a Chochin Obake, which is a paper lantern ghost. And you know, I just assume I'm kind of mispronouncing the Japanese name. Okay, but I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> but yeah, the core of Duskull is the glowing light eye, which is like, again, it's like a soul. The eye is the soul. So that glowing light then evolved into a walking lantern, a ghost lantern. And when I look up this uh, Chochin Obake, the depiction of it is basically either typical like a white paper lantern or it's red. Kind of the same way if I say like, oh, it's a goblin, people are like, oh, it has green skin. Even though it doesn't make any sense that a goblin necessarily would have green skin, you know? So red seems to be the popular color for this kind of Jokai. Meaning it just makes perfect sense for Dusclops shiny to be red. Because that's what they typically look like. And then if Dusclops shiny is red, why not make the baby Duskull also be red? Because then they match. So that's my theory on why they both have red shinies. And of course, I cannot talk about both of their shinies without mentioning how sad it is that they went from a cool bright red to this disgusting dull mess. They had like all the colors sucked out, it looks so boring. I oh, bring back the red already. There's so many colors that just got messed up. When they went from like 2D to 3D especially, it's like they decided to leave color back in 2D. I don't know why they did this. It's a very odd choice. Okay, but I digress. And honestly, if I'm just fully honest here, I don't really like Dusclops that much. I really love Duskull. I think it's super cute. It's like one of my favorite ghosts. But I just, I don't, I don't have any interest in Dusclops. <laughs> Unless, of course, you evolve it again. Because Dusknor again turns into a very cool Pokemon. And like I mentioned earlier, it evolves using the Reaper Cloth. Which is funny because Duskull was already wearing one all along. Like, why do you suddenly need another one? Like, does Duskull drop it when it evolves the first time? And then you have to, like, give it back to it so it evolves again? Like, how does this happen? Anyway, Noir is black in French, completing the natural trio of Skull, Cyclops, and Black. And uh, this French word makes sense because Sinu is based on Fra- Wait a minute, none no, of this makes sense. Well, anyway, I personally love Dusknoir because of Mystery Dungeon. It's a great character in the Explorers game specifically, which is like my favorite Pokemon game ever. It's not even a main series game, but it's like the best game. Uh, I mean, I also just love it because of the creepy and interesting dex entries. The entries speak of how Dusknor's antenna receives commands from the spirit world. Where it like takes people. And then some entries says it guides lost spirits home. And then others say it basically kidnaps humans and Pokemon to another world. And in the sword dex entry specifically, the dex questions if Dusknor even has a will of its own. So like, is it good? Is it evil? Does it even have its own will? Nobody knows, which just makes it even more creepy and mysterious. So I don't know, I like this Pokemon. But if we go back to the paper lantern ghost thing that we had with Dusclops. So they're typically depicted with a big mouth that opens, which is exactly what Dusknor has in its belly, like a big open mouth that it uses to, <laughs> I don't know, suck people into the other world or something. So this pretty much reinforces the theory that the former is really mostly based on this paper lantern creature, and also that Dusknor then continues to build on this concept, going from a light to a lantern. And this lantern pattern continues because uh, the uh, Georgian lanterns, they're not always paper. They can also be made of stone and look like this. This looks a little bit more like Dusknor. Something about the like rounded shapes of the belly to me at least. It looks like it could be inspired by this. Uh, and Dusknor shiny isn't red like the other two, instead it's blue. So I'm wondering if the natural evolution progression was glowing light evolves to paper lantern and then the paper lantern evolves into a bigger stone or metal lantern. So basically it's a bigger, stronger lantern, but it's still following the exact same concept. Because if the lantern was made out of something like copper, as it grew older, the color would change into a blue-green color, like Dusknor's blue shiny. So that would explain that as well. But for this to be true, we need something else linking Dusknor to stone or metal. And actually there kinda is something like that. 
like first we have the fact that it has an antenna that receives these ghostly signals. That's not a very stone thing, but it's a very metal thing. And further, there was a book series called Pokemon Annual in the 2010 edition on multiple occasions. They described Dusknor as metallic. Maybe it's not the number one reliable source, you know, but it has been going since 2001 and it's still going in 2024. So it's not the worst source either, I guess. I mean, it's a long time standing Pokemon source. Like, I could obviously be wrong, but it seems like it does have some kind of lantern qualities, so I feel like this is at least a decent theory. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in a video about 50 years ago or so, but the thing about Dusknor's deck centers is that if we believe them, there is canonically a spirit world full of ghosts. Not necessarily ghost type Pokemon, but like actual spirits and souls of dead people. Perhaps souls that weren't like reborn as a Pokemon, like Jamask for example. Maybe they end up in the spirit world. And we do see ghosts in several games, like actual human ghosts. I mean, they have to live somewhere. I don't think we'll ever see this in a game, but imagine how cool that would be. Even if they just gave us a short glimpse of it. Like imagine a single area you can enter to catch some new spooky Pokemon. Maybe a legendary, just to make it special. Like how we got to see other worlds in, you know, Ultra Sun and Moon. That gives us like a tiny look into what that weird spooky world is like. Oh, that would be so amazing and fantastic to see. I don't think that will ever happen. <laughs> but you know, Game Freak, please, I am begging you. So yeah, that's what I've been able to find wearing this uh, silk coat, looking at these Pokemon a bit closer, at least trying. I would love to hear it if you have any more uh, details that you could uh, bring forth to the discussion table here. The future is currently uncertain, but happy Halloween anyway. I hope you have a spooky one. Thank you for watching me talk about some ghosties, and I'll uh, hopefully see you in future videos. And if not, I, I don't know, I guess I'll have been taken to the spirit world. Okay, bye!